sometimes. Hallelujah. Because of the cares of the Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Woo, praise him. Yeah, praise him. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Come on, people. Praise the Lord. Jesus Christ is healing. Jesus Christ is healing. Come on. Come on in the anointing. Come on into the anointing. Ha <laughs> ha. Come on in to the anointing. We're going to deal with the healing Jesus tonight. Signs, wonders, and miracles. Get your followers. Come on. Come on, come on. We're going into the supernatural tonight. The supernatural power of God to heal, deliver, and set free tonight. Oh, we're going to deal with some stuff tonight. Come on in, yeah. Tony Johnson, come on, heal, Lord. <laughs> I like that. Oh, I like that. Oh, come on in. Come on in. Everybody join in because I'm telling you, you're going to love this tonight. If you're sick, you're going to be healed right now through Periscope. You got someone who needs to be healed. You're going to learn some things tonight on how to pray for them to be healed. Oh, this is supernatural, y'all. <laughs> Jesus Christ, our Lord, he is still healing the sick today. He is still healing the sick today. Come on in. Oh, yeah, let's get this thing right tonight. Come on, shake us, Lord. <laughs> Come on in. Come on in. We're going to deal with the matters of the kingdom tonight. Kingdom blessings tonight. Healing and more healing. Deliverance and more deliverance. We're going to break curses tonight. Set the captives free tonight. We're going to cast out demons tonight. In whose name? There's only one name. Jesus. Jesus. Come on. Shake us, Lord. Oh, I feel good tonight. We'll be glad you're on here tonight. Because we have some things. Yeah. Come on, Sister Silly. It's all about Jesus. <laughs> I feel good tonight, thanks. Giving him praise. He's going to shake all negativity out of your spirit tonight. So you can be healed. Shake us again, Lord. Mm, come on. Come on. Early in the morning, he's going to shake you. Oh, I love it. He's going to shake you right now. Come on, Jesus. Come on in, y'all. We're getting ready to get started. We're getting ready to get started. It's some serious stuff tonight. Are you with me tonight? Come on now. Come on, another minute. Come on, another minute. Come on, just one more minute. Come on, now get the people on. Stripe it up and down. Get your followers to come on. Because Jesus is still healing. With two or three of guys in his name, I believe you know the rest. That's us right now. I believe, come on, Ashley. Your mama being healed. Come on up in here. You're going to learn some stuff up in here tonight. Come on, come on. Come on. Come on, we got about 30 seconds. We're going to begin. Woo! I feel good. Shake us, Lord. Mm. Can't you feel it? Oh, you can feel that anointing already. Save us again. Oh, yeah. Woo! Wake up every gift. <laughs> He's going to shake us into the new. Come on, God. Ooh, come on. Come on up in here. Shake us till we look just like it. Shake us, Lord. Shake us, Lord. Come on, 15 seconds. 15 seconds. Come on in. Here we go. Come on in. Praise the Lord, everybody. God bless you tonight. All is well. Tonight... I want to deal with sick spirit. I want to deal with the spirit of sickness, spirit of disease. I say it all the time at heaven's best. I'm so tired 
of people being sick. I, I hate sickness and disease with a passion. I have a, I have a, a cruel hatred towards sickness and disease and infirmity and affliction of any kind. I can't stand it. It vexes me to the point that I have to war. I have to fight. And I'm going to fight because God gave us the authority and the power to fight sickness and disease. Not only sickness and disease. I want to deal with, with, with breaking curses off of your family. I am getting so much mail. You know, I know a lot of churches get, get nice mail. They get nice mail, you know. It comes in the mail, <clears throat> and, they, and, and, and they probably got some, some partner donations in the mail. We get a lot of mail, too. But our mail is for asking for help, for help. These people, God's people, people like you, people like me, suffering big time uh-uh they don't have to suffer they can be healed right now do do you know that right now at this very moment somebody's being healed somewhere he's a healer he's healing moment by moment hour by hour day by day month by month year by year our jesus is still healing God, our Father, my God, sits in heaven watching us operate under the anointing of healing. Ooh, I feel good tonight. Tell me something. Me talking to you right now because I started over. Are the words coming out of my mouth when I speak? Because I don't like that, that I speak and then the words come out the eye. Say the word. Tell me on this screen right now. Are the words with my mouth? Are the words with my mouth? If they are not with my mouth, tell me. Come on. First lady, let me know right now. Tell me. Because I don't like that type of broadcast. Come on up in here. Oh, we're going to deal with it. Well, I must be okay because, because no one said anything. So the words must be... Yes, they are. They're going with my mouth. Okay, then let's get busy then. Now, now, Father, in the name of Jesus. Oh, I'm okay. Thank you, Ashley. Thank you, Sheila. Father, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. I give you praise, honor, and glory. Have your way right now with us, right now, in Jesus' name. Come on. I'm going to anoint you all right now for this broadcast. I'm going to anoint you now. I'm gonna anoint you right now for this infilling, for this information right now. Woo. I feel anointed. When I anointed my head, I just anointed you. I want you to know something right now. We're not playing tonight. <clears throat> We're not going to play with families going through hell. We're not going to play with the, the afflictions, with the attack of the enemy. We are not going to do it because my Bible told me that we don't have to do it. Everybody from heaven, bless you. you already know what we stand on. <clears throat> you already know what we stand on. We stand on Matthew 10 and 1. Matthew 10 and 1. Matthew 10 and 1. Let me tell you something about Matthew 10 and 1. I received a revelation from God when he gave it to me in my first battle of warfare when I had never fought warfare in my life. And when I first fought, he gave me Matthew 10, 1 that changed my life. And, and you grab hold to it, it'll change your life too. Now, when he gave it to me, he told me this. He said, every negativity in the history of the world, every foul spirit, Every evil, bad thing in the history of the world, Matthew 10, 1 covers it. That one scripture covers it. I said, what? He said, geniuses, medical geniuses, um, um, philosophical geniuses, social geniuses, any financial geniuses, any theological geniuses. Any kind of genius that, that, that would come forth cannot think of one thing that this one scripture does not cover in the negative. It is the one that started me off to do what I do now. Matthew 10 and 1. And when he had called unto him his 12 disciples, he gave them power. 
That's all I need to know. Against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal. What? To heal. What? To heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. Have your Bibles with you tonight because you're going to need it. I'm going to flow. Have your Bibles with you tonight. I'm going to flow. I'm going to flow. Do you hear me? I am going to flow. So have your Bible ready tonight in the name of Jesus. Now, that's what I want to deal with. I want to deal with real life tonight. I want to deal with people who, 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 who are coming to us. And I tell you, it's sad because, because they need help. They really do need help. And I want you to know something tonight. Jesus heals. What? I want you to know it tonight. I don't want you to, listen, get it straight. Get that straight first, that Jesus is still healing tonight and tomorrow. Get your priorities in order. Now, here we go. Here we go. I want you to get your priorities in the proper order so you can become holy. First thing I want you to do is, I want you to get a mind to serve God and to believe God and have faith with God. I want you to shun worldliness like Smith Wigglesworth said. I want worldliness to be shunned. And he said that worldliness, this is Smith Wigglesworth now, great healer. He said that worldliness is that which, my God, cools our affection towards God. If we are attached to the world, you forget signs, wonders, and miracles. If you're attached to the world in any way, you can forget laying hands on the sick and they recover. Do you understand me? But we're going to get this thing right now. Now, now, here's what. Here's one right here. I'm going to give you some cases tonight and we're going to deal with it by the power of God. Now, these are people who are calling in to a television broadcast, they're calling, some of them are calling Pastor Jeff Lane, and they're calling him because they are in trouble. Now, when I tell you what they said, these are their own words. These are people who need help, and we're gonna deal with them because they need help. Two friends, they're friends, they're brother and sister. The brother believed that he would take his last breath next month. See, that's a lying demon right there. There's a whole lot of people that are hearing voices. <clears throat> Demons can't talk, and they are talking. Demons can talk to people. And devils are liars, they are deceivers, and they're doing a lot of talking today. Matter of fact, they're talking more today than they ever did before. They are running their mouth. And they're telling people that they're going to die early. They're telling people that they're not going to be able to uh, prosper. They're telling people they're going to lose. They're telling people that they're going to be alone. Telling people that they're going to lose their mind. They're crazy. They're telling people this and that. Well, let me tell you something. I'm going to tell you what the Lord said. The Lord said, I came that you might have life and you might have it more abundantly. The Lord is the only one that you need to hear from. So he said, look, 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 look. The sister, now get this, the brother's saying he's going to die next month, and the sister can't even pick up a glass of water. She can't even pick it up, and her body is rejecting food. That's not normal. When your body is rejecting food, there's a demon from hell involved, and we're going to deal with with it, we're going to deal with it. Now, I'm going to tell you something right now. The word of God, you better get this. The word of God in Psalm 30 and verse 2. Oh, Lord, my God, I cried unto thee and thou hast healed me. Oh, did you hear that? Oh, Lord, my God, I ask you, I cried unto you. I believe you. 
I trust you, God. God, you are faithful. You are faithful. Lord God, you created this body. You made my body in your image. I have no business with cancer killing me. I have no business on dialysis. I have no business with sugar diabetes. I have no business uh, uh, with, with lungs I can't hardly breathe. I have no business with my head pounding with headaches, backaches. I have no business getting my knees replaced. Oh, Lord, my God. I cried unto thee. He's a healer. And thou hast healed me. I want you to have faith. I'm going to touch your faith tonight. I want you to touch God. I want God to touch your faith tonight. Do you hear me? Faith. The touch of faith. Exodus 23 and verse 25 says, And ye shall, ye shall serve the Lord your God, and he shall bless thy bread and thy water. And I would take sickness away from the midst of thee. When are we going to get this thing? When are we going to? Look, look, look. I love doctors. I love nurses. And I'm glad we have hospitals. But when are you going to trust God to heal you? There are going to come a time, there's some people right now, somewhere in America, where a doctor has given up on them. You heard me. The doctor is giving up on them. There's somewhere right now where a doctor said, no more surgery for you. You had enough surgery. We've cut you open several times. We've gone inside your body, cut out some stuff, put in some stuff, and you're still no better than before. When are you going to trust God? When are you going to believe God? I trust God with my life. Jesus is my healer. Jesus is our healer. You see, let me tell you something right now. People are beginning to trust medication, doctors, nurses, surgery, more than they're trusting God. You would trust a pharmaceutical first over God. But I came by tonight to let you know to whether you believe it or not, Jesus is still healing the sick. Do you hear me? And I'm going to tell you again. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to repeat Exodus 23, verse 25. I'm going to repeat it. And you shall serve the Lord, your God, and he shall bless thy bread and thy water, and I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. Take it away, Lord. Take it away. In the name of Jesus, right where you are right now. Any sickness in your body right now, Lord, take it away from them right now. Any pain in your body, Lord, take it away from them right now. In the name of Jesus, take it away. He said he would do it. I release Exodus 23, verse 25 to you right now. He said the word of God is spirit. Do, don't you know we have the authority to take this word of God? We have the authority to take this bow. Every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Woo-hoo. We have the power and authority to, to dig into this word and throw it out, release it. He said, my word is spirit and my word is life. This ain't no, no just lettering on a, on a book. This is spirit. This is spirit. God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. This is spirit. The spirit can move. The spirit can go. The spirit can touch. The spirit can uh, follow orders from God. The spirit can save, fight, heal, lift, revive. This is the spirit of God. And everything that God said in his word can happen. The spirit makes it happen. You better believe it tonight. And it's going to make it happen for you. Whatever you're going through. Sick money, sick relationships, sick job, sick career, sick children, sick relatives, sick mind, sick heart, whatever it is. He said, I will take away, I'll take that sickness away from the midst of thee. And I believe that.
in the name of Jesus. Hold up now. Listen to me. We're going to believe this word. We're going to believe this word. And we're going to believe what he said in Deuteronomy 5.33. You shall walk in all the ways which the Lord your God hath commanded you. That ye may live. Ooh. I don't care if a devil tell you you're going to die. This, these people are from Georgia. They're from Georgia. Why well, neither from Georgia called it in? And said that the brother and sister, the brother said he's going to die next month. Hey, no, you're not. It says you shall walk in all the ways which the Lord your God has commanded you that ye may live and that it may be well with you. Oh, right now, in the name of Jesus, it is well with you. I take the authority as a preacher and as a pastor of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I declare that it is well with you. It is well with you. In every area of your life, it is well with you. Satan is a liar and a deceiver. Every weapon he's formed against you, it is well with you. The word of God says so. It is well with you. It is well with you. Do you hear me? I bind up every demonic spirit in your presence right now. I rebuke every demon that's trying to creep up on you right now. I command it to loose your house, loose your family, and let you go in the name of Jesus right now. I rebuke those shadowy figures you've seen walking through your home. I curse it with a curse from God, and I command them. They must obey. They have no authority. They must obey me to the letter. I am a disciple of Jesus Christ, not because of me, but because of the Jesus in me. The Jesus in me has more power than them. So they must obey in the name of Jesus. And Matthew 10, 1 gave me the power to speak to them. So I'm telling them now, leave them alone. Go in the name of Jesus. Hold your peace. You stop talking to them in the name of Jesus. Now get this. That food. The sister is rejecting food in the name of Jesus. In the supernatural now, I'm in the spirit realm. In the supernatural, I'm going to put my hands on her stomach right in Georgia. That's right, you heard me. I'm going to put my hands on her stomach right now, right in Georgia, under the power of the Holy Ghost, under the anointing of the Holy Ghost. And as I have my hand on her body right now in Georgia, whew, glory to God, help me, Holy Ghost. I command your stomach, sister, to be healed in the name of Jesus. And I bind up every blockage in your belly, blocking food from coming into your belly in the name of Jesus. You can no longer reject food because God made her belly to receive food. So in the name of Jesus, I command your, oh, there it is. I command your intestines to now receive food, your esophagus to receive food. There it is. In the name of Jesus, be healed. Be healed. In the name of Jesus, I command your stomach to obey the word of God. By his stripes, your stomach is now healed. Your stomach can no longer reject food. And in the name of Jesus, I'm going to grab her hands. She cannot hold a glass of water. But I'm grabbing right now. I'm holding both her hands. Say supernatural, church. Say supernatural. Let me tell you something about the supernatural and the spiritual things of God. Handle spiritual matters with spiritual things the word of God says. But let me tell you something. See, these things are foolishness to the natural man. He can't understand these things. Neither can he know them. Why? Because they're spiritual. Spiritually discerned. And I don't care. Guess what? I'm going to do the foolish things of God. That's right. Distance don't mean nothing to God. Distance don't mean a thing to God. Right in Georgia. That's where she is. Heal in your belly. Heal. But I got our hands right now. Father, right now. See, the Bible, the Bible says, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Woo! The kingdom of God is at hand. Mm -mm. Heal the sick. Mm. Cleanse the lepers. Raise the dead. Woo. Cast out devils. Freely you receive. Freely give. So I freely give this healing to her hands. She can hold any glass and anything she wants. Now, come on, praise with me. Come on, give God praise for, for his power. Come on, give God praise for what he's doing tonight. Come on up in here. Come on up in here now. God is doing this thing. 
God is with us. God is with us. Oh my God, thou has healed her. Woo my God, my God. Now, 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 here's another one who called in to, to Pastor Jeff laying down in Florida. That's right, Mr. Pat. Come on, get some of this. Bonnie from Arizona. <clears throat> Need more x-rays of her stomach. Here's another stomach. There's always something wrong, people. Someone put this Bible on my stomach. I'm going to stand in the gap for everybody that got problems in that stomach. Come on up in here, Mr. Pat. God bless you. Everybody who has problems in their stomach, I'm going to stand in the Is there one? Is there a man? Mm. Is there a man? Is there a woman that was standing in the gap for them? Woo! Here am, here am I, Lord. I stand in the gap. Come on. Come on. Come on. We stand in the gap. Right on time. Praise him. In the gap right now. Mm, mm, mm. Stomach problems right now in the name of Jesus. Everything in your stomach that was planted, that was not planted by the Lord, shall now, just like Romans said, the book of Romans said, everything that was planted in the first chapter of Romans, mm, excuse me, no, nope, sorry. Romans said that you should see the invisible things clearly. Okay, now, everything that was planted, that was not planted by our Heavenly Father, it needs to go. And guess what? This word can root it out. Ooh, stomach problems. Ooh, diarrhea problems. Constipation problems. Rejecting food like she was in Georgia. Mm. Uh, whatever trickery, whatever uh, pain, discomfort in your stomach, whatever dysfunction is in your stomach, whatever malfunction is in your stomach, I release the power of God in your stomach right now to heal your belly. Oh, wow, I heard the word in my left ear, colon, Jesus. Colon. I'm so sick of colon problems. Every time I turn around, somebody's getting a colonoscopy or whatever it is. I hope I said it right. I don't care. I need God to heal your colon. And colon cancer is big right now. And in my prayer time, the Lord is revealing that demon of colon cancer to me. Lots of people, lots of people getting this demon in their colon. Colon is important to us. Your whole body is important to you. Not one part of your body should be touched by sickness nor disease in the name of Jesus. So in your stomach right now, ooh, heal Lord God right now. Said, need more x-rays of her stomach. Why do you need more x-rays? You've already had some x-rays. Why do you need more x-rays? I can answer that for you. Why do they need more x-rays? The reason is. First, hold up. I'm going to tell you what Amos said. Woo, woo. Woo, I set that thing up. Hold up. Hold up. Let me tell you what Amos said. First, let me tell you who. Who. A moth is okay, or well, maybe it's over here. I hope I can find it. I need to tell you what A moth said, and then, and then you'll hear it. Now, here's the deal. The deal is they're taking more X-rays because uh, an X-ray can't pick up a demon. Mm -hmm. It's that simple. It's that simple. See, there are some things in your stomach. And the MRI just won't be able to see. Ooh, there it is. I found it. Whoa, now get this. Need more x-rays because the x-ray cannot pick up an unclean trespassing spirit that has invaded your body. God calls it a, trans, a transgressor and a trespasser. He doesn't have... He's trespassing against God's property because, you know, this right here, this right here, this is the temple of God. Right here, this is the altar of God right here. So, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Whose picture is that behind you? There's a lot of pictures behind me. I got my mom and daddy back there. I got, my, I got Jesus back there, but I also got Amoth back there. And that's who I'm talking about right now. I got a lot of pictures behind me. My daddy was a school teacher. I got his class back there. The last class he had in 1969 at John Armstrong Challenge in Rona Rapids. He, he was a senior class advisor, science teacher. 
math teacher. I got his whole class. Look at it. Got his whole class on the wall of class 69, John Armstrong, Child, and Rona Rapids, North Carolina. Matter of fact, they're having homecoming right now this week where many will come back to that town. In the name of Jesus, he also was championship basketball coach there. I got a lot of people behind me. My mama, my brother, Santora, Constance, and Frank Jones. But I have Amoth back there. And I'm getting ready to tell you something about Amoth. Ah, Rona Rapids, North Carolina. I love it. Now, let me tell you something about Amoth. Mm. See, when I said that sometimes the MRI can't pick it up, the Brantleys, praise God. I love Rona Rapids and I love people from Rona Rapids. So we're connected. Stay connected now, homie, in Jesus' name. North Carolina in the house. Now, now, blood test can't pick it up. The MRI can't pick it up. Uh, the 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 x-rays and whatever tests they like to give you to try to see what's wrong with you because they're having a hard time finding out what's wrong with your body. So here's the thing. There is something there because you are sick. You're feeling sick. There's something moving. There's something hurting. There's something doing something, but they can't find it. Man said, I can't find it. Uh, matter of fact, your relatives, sometimes friends might even tell you, sometimes it's in your mind. There's nothing wrong with you. That's why doctors can't find it because it's in your mind. That's a lie. It's not in your mind. That's one thing I know. I know my body and you know your body. So get this. When they need more x-ray, they're hunting for it. A doctor, they're looking for it, but they can't find it because that demon is hiding behind your organs. That demon is, he's invisible to the natural eye. So you got to see him with a supernatural eye when he's hiding. Now, he can show himself to your natural eye when he chooses to. But when an unclean, trespassing spirit want to hide from your natural eye, it's easy for him. But guess what? He can't ever hide from the supernatural eyes of God. He can't ever hide when God has mm, increased your supernatural eyesight. And that's what you got to do. You got to ask God. God, touch my eyes. Ooh. Touch my eyes in the supernatural. That I'll be able to see the enemy wherever he's hiding, wherever he's at, wherever he is, and what weapon he's forming. Now get this. Here is what Amorph. Now Amorph is in Italy. He can't even, hallelujah, Earth is from South Carolina. Come on in here, girl, because you're going to get some information tonight. Hallelujah. Come on in here to want to hope. Now get this. Amorph, I read his books. Why? Because he cast out demons all over the world. That's why. And he, he, he's like 90 years old now. So he's retired probably. I don't know. But I heard he couldn't speak any English at all. He speaks Italian. But guess what? He know how to cast out a demon. He know how to heal the sick. So here's what he said. No, now, I'm, I'm going to tell you again what Bonnie from Arizona said. Need more x-rays of her stomach. Something bad. Woo! Something bad going on in my intestines. And the doctor, uh, I'm telling you exactly what she said. This is from her mouth to my ears. I heard her say it. And the doctor don't know what it is yet. Good God Almighty. It's causing a lot of problems and kidney stones. And now I've gotten some type of infection in my head. Hold up, hold up, hold up. The thing is giving her problems in her stomach. Ooh, <laughs> hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Mm, 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 mm. Oh, we're going to do the work of the Lord. You know, heaven's best. We keep it real. I hate Satan and I hate what he does to God's people. Mm. But anyway, get this. We're starting in her stomach. This is Bonnie in Arizona. The problem is in the stomach and they can't find it. Hold on. How now there's an infection in her head that's causing a lot of trauma. It makes me to shake all over. Oh my God. Lying W. Uh-uh. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Uh-uh. Mm-mm. 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 Hold on. Mm-mm. That's serious business right there. Saints. Saints. 
Here's what Amoth said. Saints, she has a problem in her stomach. Come on, prayer warriors. I'm going to teach you how to operate in the supernatural power of God. And I'm going to teach you how to war good warfare like Paul said. I'm going to teach you how to believe God and trust God to anoint you from on high by fire. Put fire in your hand, healing fire in your hand. And that you'll be able to do the things that you never dreamed you could do. He's going to stir up gifts in you. That's in you. Come on now. Come on now. Here's what Amos said. He said, and I, and I agree with what he said. An illness that is associated with even the lowest levels of demonic activity is peculiarly resistant to every known prescription drug. Whoa. Rare is the doctor who will admit that he may be dealing with a different set of causes when faced with patients whose symptoms and clinical tests are unexplainable. See like that for a minute. See like that. Good God Almighty, Amorph. Boy, you done told the truth here. If they, the doctors, the hospitals, the, the medical scientists and experts, if they are the surgeons, if they are confronted with the unexplainable, many people will appeal to a psychiatrist rather than call on the saints of God, the anointed ones, my God, the, the, the preachers and the pastors for help. Jesus. He said, as a result, the condition of these unfortunate patients does not improve, but become worse. I hope you got all that. That's true. Gabriel Amorth is his name over in Italy. I'm not Catholic, but he is. And I'm going to go along with what he said because uh, I see that that's what's happening myself. But in the name of Jesus, in Bonnie's stomach right now by the power of God, I take this word again and I lay it on my stomach for Bonnie in Arizona. And in the name of Jesus, heal her. I stand on Psalm 107 and 20. Y'all know that about me. If you know me, you know I'm going to stand on Psalm 107 and 20. I'm sitting here in Maryland. And Bonnie's in Arizona. So you know I got to stand on the word of God. And Psalm 107 and 20. And Psalm 107 and 20 said, and he sent his word. <laughs> I got joy when I said that. Mm, mm, mm. Ooh, joy came in me when I said that. That's the joy of the Lord. That's the joy of the Lord. See, see God... See, See, God cannot lie. He's not a man. <laughs> He's not a man that he should lie. When I said that word from Psalm 107, 20, it quickened me and joy came in me because I knew that sending the word will not be uh, fruitless. It's not in vain. <laughs> sending that word would do exactly what it said it would do. My God, my God, my God. Oh, I thank God for you too. Oh, we Muka 22. I thank God for you too. I send the word of God. He said, and he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. That means a lot right there. <clears throat> See, he sent the word and healed them, but that thing's trying to destroy them. See, he has planned to destroy their life. You can't enjoy life sick. You can't enjoy your relatives sick. You can't even enjoy Jesus sick. How are you going to enjoy living if your living is full of sickness and disease and torment from hell? 
Uh uh. No, you're going to be healed. You're coming out of torment. You're coming out of sickness. You're coming out of disease. You're going to enjoy life. You will stop existing. There's no, there's no fun in existing. But there's lots of fun, lots of joy in living. God said, You are the living. We serve a living God, breathing, who can touch us right where we are. Isn't this your pinky? This is your pinky, isn't it? Okay. Everyone has a pinky. If you have a pinky, and all of a sudden, a pain come in this pinky, you feel that pain. You feel it. It just came from nowhere. You didn't hit it. You didn't cut it. You didn't do anything to it. It just showed up in your little pinky. Let me tell you something right now. That's not normal. And if a pain show up in your pinky, as little as your pinky is, or your little toe, or your big toe, or your ear, wherever it shows up, don't you dare, oh, oh, I got a pain. I don't wait. I hope it go away. We don't hope it go away no more. See, what's happening to you is this. A demon want to know what you know spiritually. He want to know if you know anything. What do you know? Because if you don't know anything spiritually, mm, he going to have, have some fun with his wickedness with you. So he's testing you with a pain to see if you know anything. <clears throat> so if he see you, just say, well, I'm going to wait. Till it, ooh, that pain hurt. I'm just waiting on and let it go away by itself. He knows what he's dealing with. He's dealing with someone who doesn't know that it's him messing with you. He's, he's doing a test run on you. He's doing a test run on your pinky. But he's really doing a test run on your pinky because he planned on coming inside to some organs. Mm. He planned on getting into, into some bones and some muscles. Just some flesh and some organs. But hold on. But here's what you got to do. You let a pain show up in my pinky here. Immediately, in the name of Jesus, I command you to loose my finger and let it go in the name of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus against you. How dare you touch my finger? Do you know who I am? That's right. You talk to it like that. Do you know who I am? I'm a disciple of Jesus Christ. Now loose my finger and get out of here. You're wasting your time. And sure enough, bam, it's gone. Gone. Ain't no hanging around. Ain't no hanging around three days later. Ooh, it's still hurt. No. You speak to it immediately because God gave you the power and authority according to Matthew 10, 1 to get it out in Jesus' name. So that thing in her head, mm. Kingdom of God is at hand. See this finger? Uh-oh. I'm going to my weapons book. Uh-oh. I'm going to my weapons book. Uh-oh. God told me to go there. I'm going to my weapons book. I'm going to tell you. because I'm going to teach you some things. I'm going to give you some weapons on how to war. On how to fight the enemy. I'm going to give you some weapons on what to do. Because that demon got to go. He got to get out of her, her head, her stomach. Oh, man, uh-uh. Hold on, hold on. I'm going to my book. I'm going to my book. Now, 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 now. I want to tell you something else, too. I told you that the doctors don't know what's going on. But here's the other thing. Uh, you might not want to hear this. I'm not saying it, but it's in the word of God. <clears throat> here's what it says. I mean, like you can take the medicine. See, look, I don't tell anybody to stop taking that medicine. I'm not, I'm not one of those type of preachers that say, stop taking it. No, never told them about it. That never will. I'm not the type of person to say, oh, you're a fool for taking that medicine. I'm not going to say that. But what I will do, I will pray for you to be healed. 
I will declare you healed in Jesus' name. And then I will pray that your doctor will tell you that you don't need to be on your medication anymore. We have people come in with incurable diseases getting healed, getting off medication every day. Getting off medication like this, like that. Some people come to us taking 30 pills a day, 15 pills a day. And then boom, don't take none. Come on, somebody. Sometimes it's a, look, it's a process sometimes. You, I mean, they might not come off all the pills at one time, but maybe they started with 15 and now they're taking 10. Or maybe they started with 10, now they're taking 5. Do you get it? The healing process is already in effect. Because the Bible says in Jeremiah 30, 13, thou hast no healing medicines. Ooh. The medicine can't heal her belly. The medicine cannot heal her head. It can take some pain away from you. You know, they got those painkillers, but it can't heal you. Jeremiah 46, 11 says, in vain shalt thou use many medicines. Many medicines. In vain shalt thou use many medicines, for thou shalt not be cured. Jeremiah 46, 11. Woo. Mini Madison, question for you. If you've been on medication for the last 10 years, last 15 years, last 20, last 30 years, how come you're not healed? How come you're still on it? How come 10 years later you're still taking medicine? Prescription been changed over and over again. If the medicine can heal you because the doctor said take this and everything will be all right, how come you're still on the medication? Some people have been taking medication for the last 15 years. Because in vain you take many medicines according to the word of God. For thou shalt not be cured. But hold on now. Ooh, hold on. Here's what I'm going to do right now. I want her head to be taken care of. I want her head to be taken care of. And her head is going to take care of. And hold on. If you have a problem with your head, this is for you too. This is for you. If you have problems with your head, I'm going to... Do the same thing for you, okay? All right, now, here's what I'm gonna do. See this finger right here? I'm gonna take this finger and put it into your brain right now. Say supernatural. I want you to know that there's nothing natural about this. The Bible says there's no power in the natural. The flesh profited nothing. This, the spirit thing. I'm gonna put my finger into your brain right now along with Bonnie in Arizona. Because, you know why? Because it's not my finger. See, I'm, see, I'm in the spirit realm. You see my finger. You see me in the flesh. But in the spirit realm, ooh, ooh, where the angels are, where the Holy Ghost is, where the blood is, where the cross is, where heaven is, where Jesus is, where the Father is, my God, my God, where that fire is from heaven. I've got my finger into her brain. And the Bible says this. Here it is. It's in your head. Are you dealing with migraine? You got something moving in your head. Uh-oh. Hold on. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I got you now. I got people that I know writing letters and I know personally. Things were moving around in their head. And they want it gone. And so do I. We just had a young lady, not this past Sunday, but Sunday for last, from Baltimore, Maryland, came to our church, saw us on television, saw us all on TV, worldwide TV, she saw us. And she came, why? Because there was something in her stomach, just like this one, but guess what? It went to her head, I just thought of it. This is in Arizona, she's in Baltimore. Started in her stomach, but went to her head. Ooh, familiar spirit, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. But it went to her head and it was moving in her head. She knew it was there, pressing her head, she said. She wrapped her head up real tight with something, trying to, to I don't know, trying to tighten it up. You can't tighten up a demon. You got to cast them out in Jesus' name. And that's what I'm going to do right now. Right where you are. You're suffering from migraine. You're suffering from uh, an aneurysm. You had an aneurysm before. 
You got something moving around in your head, in your brain right now. In the name of Jesus, this is what it says. It says, but if I, with the finger of God, cast out devils, no doubt, then no doubt the kingdom of God has come upon you. There it is. I cast that thing out of your brain. I cast that thing out of your skull in the name of Jesus. I cast that thing out of your membrane. I cast that thing out of your front lobe and back lobe. I cast it out of the top of your brain, the bottom of your brain, the back of your brain, and the side of your brains in the name of Jesus. That's right. See, now that's how you tighten it. See, now, now I made it real tight for that demon. He ain't got nowhere to go now, but out. He got nowhere to move now, but out. <laughs> and guess what? He got to go. He got to go out of your head. Hold on. Uh -oh. While I'm doing this, dementia devils. Mm. Alzheimer's demons. While I'm at it, I might as well get the big boys. Ooh, ooh. In the name of Jesus. Dementia devil. <clears throat> Here's what I want you to do. If there's anyone in your family with dementia or Alzheimer's, Or autism. Oh, we're getting to the big boys now. I want you to say their name in the atmosphere. I want you to say their name. That's right. You call the name, whether it's a friend or family, someone you know, just say their name. See, on this anointing, we're on an open heaven right now. And if you're tuning in to me right now, you're under the same open heaven that I'm under right now. And right now, I'm operating in supernatural power right now. I feel the power in me so great right now that, that my God, my God, if I get off Periscope, I got to run through my house and shout and give God glory. But I'm in my war room right now. Now, right now, just call the name out and we're going to, in the name of Jesus, we're agreeing right now. I got my finger. I bind up Alzheimer's right now in the name of Jesus. Go! Out of her head. Go out of his head, you lying dog, you. I rebuke dementia demons right now. You a liar and deceiver. They're going to be in their right mind. God said, I did not give you mm, spirit of fear, but of a sound mind. Sound mind. In the name of Jesus, that dementia devil, there it is. Go. I cast you out. If I, by the finger of God, cast out devils, no doubt, the kingdom of God is coming to you. In the name of Jesus. I meant you go. Alzheimer's go. Mm, 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 mm. Migraines go. In Jesus' name. Ooh, dementia go. You heard me. Autism. You lying devil. You leave that child alone. Leave that man, that woman alone. Go. In the name of Jesus. Ooh, there it is. You're back in your right mind. Come on. Come on, give God praise. Come on. Come on. Come on. Give God praise. You're back in your right mind. Come on. Give God praise. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Give God praise right now. Come on. Give him praise right now. Come on. Right now. Come on. Right now. In the name of Jesus. Woo. Glory to God. Mm. Woo. I feel good right now, saints. <clears throat> I feel good right now. The word of God is real. I feel good right now. Woo. Woo. There's a power behind the scenes right now. Of your life that can heal all things, that can deliver things, that can set things free, is God's sovereign power. And it is for you today. Take it. <laughs> Take it. Take it right now in the name of Jesus. Woo. Take it right now. Oh my God. People are writing me. People are writing me. People are writing me. They need help. Well, I like this one. Pastor Angelo O. Jones, I saw you on TV. I ordered all and I sold a seed. She must have sent that to the network. You know, got the all from the network. Because we give everything away free. We give the anointed handkerchiefs away. We give the oil away. I have gone to deliverance meetings 
and conferences. I went to many churches, but I need my family delivered like never before. Whoa. I'm married 42 years. Two children and grandkids. My son is in Angola prison with a life sentence. God didn't give Joseph this sentence. This man did. My parents are deceased. This, this thing on us, curses woo, that were passed down from former generations. I know that so many things has happened to my children over my family and my grandkids. So Pastor Angelo, I ask that you help me to understand God is no respecter of persons. No, he isn't. I clean my house. I remove so many items, shoes, clothes, pictures from my son's room, my daughter's room. I've been here 27 years and I'm in Louisiana. She gave her address in Louisiana. I pray in my home. I got rid of movies, CDs that did not please God. Oh, that's what I'm talking about. Jewelry. Woo. I like her. I'm in a church as well as my husband. I have seen things and people in my home in the spirit. God always wake me up to kill them. Ooh. To kill them. Mm. Mm. I'm going to join forces with her right now. I'm going to join forces with her in Louisiana right now. Because there are some generations of curses running through her bloodline. She's already recognized it. Some of you looking at me right now, you got the same issues. You got generational curses running through the bloodline. There are some pastors who today don't even believe in generational curses. I've heard them say it. I'm going to pray for them. I pray they pray for me. The generation curses are real. It's in the Bible. Jesus said so. He said the sins of the fathers will visit the children from one, two, three, through four generations. My God. Johnny Gasson, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, we did. I'm calling his name out right now to receive all this right now. Johnny Gasson. You're, going, you're healed right now in Jesus' name. As I send this out right now, in the name of Jesus. Father, right now, by the power of God. Father, right now, go into the bloodlines. Right now, in, in Jesus' name. Here's what I want you to do. If you're looking at me right now, I'm taking authority over your bloodline right now. South Carolina motorcycle. He had a motorcycle crash. Oh, there's a lot of those going on all over the country right now. Two just got killed in the same week up here in this area, Maryland area. Two in in one week. They one of them just on his way to work. Father, in the name of Jesus, put a hedge of protection around the motorcycle drivers, Lord God. Please, Lord. Please, Lord. Because Satan's taking them out. Two wheels out there. He's taking them out on four. So you know he's gonna take them out on two. But in the name of Jesus, Johnny. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> I'm gonna send this. I'm gonna get back to her. But since Sister Shula them, who Came from South Carolina. She and Brother Shula came all the way to Maryland and spent the whole week with us. Well, almost the whole week. I think they spent about three days with us from South Carolina, I believe it was. And and and, uh, and it was all good. Now, here's what I'm going to do. I want to send uh, a healing word to him. I want to send one to him right now. And I believe I have one. I do have one. Come on, God, give it to me. Because I had it a second ago. And I'm going to send it to him. I'm going to send it to Johnny. Right now, in the name of Jesus, by faith. Ooh. Ooh. By faith. By faith. Come on here. Uh-uh. By faith. John, right now, in the name of Jesus. Get ready, man. If he has any broken bones. I want the Lord to heal him right now. If he has any broken bone, here it is right now. I got it. Here it is right now. Now, 
John, this is for you. From Jeremiah 17, 14. Heal me, O Lord, and I shall be healed. Save me, and I shall be saved, for thou art my praise. So in the name of Jesus, I don't know if John is saved. They didn't say whether he was saved or not. But I declare him saved and healed right now. And he shall not die, but he shall live and declare the works of the Lord. Done deal. I'll be waiting for that testimony. I'll be waiting to hear about Brother Johnny because he's, he's a healed man right now in the name of Jesus. Woo! -hoo! Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. It's a healer. Uh-oh, I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it. <clears throat> There's a healer in the house. And his name is Jesus. Mm, 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 mm. There's a healer in the house right now. And his name is Jesus. Listen to me. This thing is so good that the head thing is done. Heal in Jesus' name. Now, here's another one. May in North Carolina. I'm from North Carolina. So you know I want to hear this one. She called this one in. She said, I have this cough. It's a chronic cough. And I've been to the doctor twice for it. And they gave me one type of cough medicine. And that didn't work. And the next one worked some, but it hasn't, you know, cut it up. So I need a healing for that. And it causes me to have headaches. The cough is causing her to have headaches. And get dizzy, lying demon. So I just need God to heal me. I like this. See this? People are calling. People are writing. They know who the healer is. I need God to heal me. They gave me the medicine. That didn't heal me. I got a little bit of relief, but I'm still not healed. How many of you got a little relief but still didn't get healed? In the name of Jesus. She said, I just need God to heal me because nothing, nothing, nothing seems to be working. A bunch of doctors Treating me, but nothing happening, she said. My God, my God. I know a doctor. He don't need a bunch of doctors with him. I know a doctor, the great physician. Ooh, I know a doctor. He never lost a case. Mm, and he's always ready to operate. <laughs> he never sleeps nor slumbers. Never takes a vacation. Ooh, that's my kind of doctor. I need God to reveal to me what's going on in my chest area because I have never smoked cigarettes. That's all right. A demon is invading your territory. And because he's invading your territory, my God, my God, he don't need a cigarette to invade your territory. So we got to deal with that demon in the name of Jesus. Ooh. Come on, God. We're ready. Mm, mm. Now, she asked. Did she ask? She did say, I need God to do it. She asked, didn't she? Matthew 7, 7. I release it right now. Matthew, the seventh chapter, verse 7. I'm going to release it. She did ask. For everyone that ask it, receive it. Mm, Jesus. And he that seek it, find it. And to him that knock it, it shall be opened. In the name of Jesus, may in North Carolina. Mm, the door to healing, you knocked. It just opened from heaven. You were seeking healing. Mm, that's open too. Your healing has now arrived into your chest area. And, ooh, ooh, and your head. And your throat. You ask, then you may you ask. Ooh, that's all we have to do is ask. Saints, all we have to do is ask God. Father, I ask you to heal her right now. In your son, Jesus Christ of Nazareth's name. Father, I ask you right now to deliver her from this attack. In Jesus' name. Father, I ask you to set her free. In Jesus' name. Father, I ask you right now to touch everyone right now that's with me 
under this anointing right now. Mm, healing right now. Healing. 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 Ooh, there it is. You're being healed right now. Healing. More healing. From the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. Healing. In your bone. Healing. In your muscles. Healing. In your respiratory system. Healing. In your nervous system. Healing. My God, my God. In your heart. Healing. In your veins, healing. In your arteries, healing. Mm. Mm. Oof. Oof, Jesus. Healing all over. <laughs> Let's go to Virginia. I'm sorry. Her name is Virginia, but she's in California. So let's go to Cali. I have cellulite. Uh-oh, I don't believe this. I don't believe what I'm getting ready to read to you. Oh, my goodness. I wish she was watching me right now. Sister May. Oh, my God. <clears throat> A woman came to our church last night. Last night. With a serious problem in her right eye. Something that I had never heard of before in my life. Now, you've heard of shingles. We've all heard of shingles. Terry Bradshaw, the Pittsburgh still a legend. He does all the shingle commercials on TV. Am I right? Yeah. He said he has shingles. My aunt has shingles and my uncle has shingles. And shingles is hell on earth. Shingles, the shingles I know was across this area, you know, across the stomach area, you know, across here. That's the kind of shingles I know. And that shingle bring nothing but pain with it. Serious pain. Well, this right here. This is my first time reading this. I have cellulite in my left eye. Very serious bacteria infection. Well, get this. The lady last night that came to Heaven's Best last night. She had been diagnosed with shingles in her eye. What? What did you just say, Pastor? Shingles in her eye. When did people get shingles in their eyes? Ah, I've never heard this in my life. But guess what? That's serious. I know the shingles on here. And that's serious. So the shingles on your eye, behind your eyeball, all in your eye. And guess what? She had marks around the eye. See, it's, it's, it's behind the eye. But then guess what it does? It starts protruding outside the skin. Mm, Jesus. Mm. So I lay hands on her eye. I threw holy water on her eye. I'm not Catholic, but I, oh yeah, oh yeah, I use holy water. And I didn't get it from the Catholics either. I got it from God. Protestant churches don't use holy water. Well, I was on TV using it, and next day I knew. Almost everybody on TV started using holy water. <laughs> That's a good thing. I like it. I didn't know any other Protestant churches, you know, using holy water. Why did I use it? I used it because Ezekiel 36, 25 told me to use it. What? Yeah, Ezekiel 36, 25 said, Then shall I sprinkle uh, clean water upon you. Then shall I sprinkle upon you clean water, and you shall be cleansed of all your filthiness. And of all your idols will I cleanse you. That's all I needed to know. Bible. Bible. So I started using it. And guess what? It works. I sprinkle it and they drink it also. Go down to their body. Heal. Y'all, Y'all, we're going to use everything that's Bible. I'm not going to use anything that's not in the Bible. If it's in the Bible, I'm going to use it. Now, she has cellulite in her left eye. The woman last night, Sister May, had shingles in her right eye. I laid my hands on her eye in the name of Jesus. So right now... Virginia, California, you out there, you got some demon disease that shouldn't even be messing with your eye, messing with your eye. I'm going to lay my hand on your eye right now. She said that it gives me headaches. This is the third one with headaches. 
What is it? This is about the third case that it starts somewhere else and then they get the headaches. But that's why I stuck my finger, not my finger by itself, but the finger of God into your brain tonight to get these headaches out of your brain. It gives me headaches. It's like a sinus infection. Very strong medication. Ooh. But she's calling because the strong medication did not heal her. Mm. No, it did not. They gave me antibiotics, and it seems to be a lot more serious than just an eye infection. Sister, Virginia, it is more than an eye infection. It is an attack from demonic spirits from the pit of hell messing with your eye, trying to destroy your eye and your brain through a demonic attack. And we're not going to have it in the name of Jesus. All sickness and disease come from the pit of hell. Okay, what did anybody say? Let me tell you something right now. Everything that happened to you is spiritual first. You heard me. Whatever you're going through right now, the origin, the origin of your issue is spiritual first. You heard me? It's spiritual first. It might be in the natural now, but it started in the spirit realm. The Bible even said that God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. Satan and his demons are spirits. And every negative thing, don't be believing that lie that God made somebody sick. God ain't made nobody sick. All sickness and disease come from hell. He ain't gonna teach you a lesson by making you sick, man. Come on. Anyway, this thing is not helping her, and it is more than an eye fix. Like I said, Amos said, a doctor, most of them won't even admit when it's something unexplainable. They won't admit that it's something that's not normal. There's something out of the natural messing with you, messing with your body, and we can't help you. Only the power of God can help you. But let me tell Virginia and California something right now. Jeremiah 30 and 17 says, for I will restore health. Ooh, good God. What? Some of you need to be restored back to health right now. You were healthy at one time. You were healthy. Some of you, you weren't always on medication. Some of you, you were a picture of health. Energized. You could run to and fro with no issues. For I will restore health unto thee and I will heal thee of thy wounds, said the Lord. My God, my God, she's wounded. It's more than an infection. He's wounded from that motorcycle crash down in, in uh, South Carolina, brother Johnny. His wound, he said, I will heal thee of thy wound. Jeremiah 30, 17 said it. In Jesus' name, I declare her eye heal. I declare the say like gone. In Jesus' name. Woo, glory to God. Y'all, that woman, getting back to the lady who wrote me and said she's seen some stuff in her house. I got 15 more minutes and then I'm done tonight. In 15 minutes. But, but over the next 15 minutes, a whole lot of people could be healed and delivered. 15 minutes. Hundreds. Thousands could be healed just because one person like you. Come on, somebody. See, this healing is going out to your loved ones. It just ain't coming to you. It's going through you and into your bloodline. But the woman that wrote me, I take authority over the bloodline right now. And I bind up all curses that you have inherited from your ancestors and from your forefathers and your foremothers. I got a question for you tonight. <clears throat> what was your relatives doing in the year 1816? Hmm? Okay. What were your relatives doing in the year 1715? I mean, they were all your relatives. They are your kin and your blood. Okay, well, let's do this then. How about this? Can you even tell me what your relative was doing in 1906. Hmm. No, you can't, can you? You don't know jack of what they were doing, do you? Well, guess who knows what they were doing? Knows everything that they were doing. God knows what they were doing, and Satan knows what they were doing. 
And if your ancestors, if your ancestors were atheists, didn't believe in God, you've inherited something. If your ancestors was practicing witchcraft and voodoo and sorcery, you inherited something. If your ancestors went to root doctors, come on, y'all, come on, y'all. South, I know about root doctors. I was a little bitty boy. I didn't know what he did, but I knew people were calling them Dr. Brown, Dr. Brown. Uh, Dr. Brown, he wasn't no doctor. He was a root doctor working for Satan. People going to him to get help. People going to him to hurt people. People going to him for answers. He didn't have no answers. He opened up more doors to him. If your ancestors did that, you've inherited something. And false religion. The list can go on and on. If your ancestors were thieves and robbers, Fifteen thousand people in there. Now, one time, are they mentioning anything like what I just mentioned to you with bloodline curses? And they're sitting there with this stuff happening, but they never get mentioned. Now, I'm gonna tell you something right now. The cry of demons, according to uh, Mark one and twenty three, is let us alone. Demons want to be left alone. They don't want you to say anything about them. They want to be left alone. See, we're putting curses in your bloodline, so let us alone. Cancer running through your family, so let us alone. Sugar diabetes that ran all through your family, so let us alone. Alcoholism run, uh, poverty running through your bloodline, let us alone. Let us alone. Demons say, let us alone, but we're not going to leave them alone. Jesus didn't leave them alone. When that demon in Mark, the first chapter, first 23, Hold out, let us alone. By the 25th verse, Jesus says, shut up. Hold out peace and come out. He rebuked him. The Bible said, Jesus rebuked him saying, hold out peace and come out. So we're not going to let you alone, demon, to run through our people. And I ain't talking about no race. I'm talking about God's children. All God's children. We're not going to let you run through God's children, God's people, our people with, with curses. I got 10 minutes. In the name of Jesus. If it's not dealt with, they will move from generation to generation. If it's not dealt with in the spirit realm, in the supernatural realm, relative die, they go to another relative. That relative die, the demon just pick another one out. That's why when he killed your relative with breast cancer, when he killed your great-grandma with breast cancer, then he came and killed your grandma. Then he came and killed your aunt. Then he came and put something in your mama like he did my family. Mm. And her sisters, mm. you got a problem. He's running through your bloodline. As soon as one die, he chooses another one. In the name of Jesus, by the power of God in me. I boldly, boldly come through the throne of grace. My help is in the Lord. And in the name of Jesus, by the power of God, I come against every bloodline curse, every generational curse. And I rebuke you in Jesus' name. I rebuke you in Jesus' name. I bind you to the cross in Jesus' name. I bind you to the blood of Jesus in Jesus' name. I bind you right now to the power of God in Jesus' name. I bind you to the Holy Ghost and the Holy Ghost fire in Jesus' name. I bind you up 
your, I bind up your curse. I bind up your power. I bind up your weapons in Jesus name. I bind up your stronghold. I pull them down off those families right now. I pull you out of the bloodline that always stops here tonight. And you know, I got you. You know, I got you. You can't go no further in the name of Jesus. You can't keep traveling through the bloodline now in the name of Jesus. I rebuke you. I speak to you now go from them now. And I command you to go to the place that Jesus Christ set aside for you to go. Sealed by the power of the Holy Ghost and with fire. <laughs> oh man, it feels good. It feels good to operate in the power of God. It feels good when Jesus is working through you. It feels good when Jesus works signs, wonders, and miracles through you. Ooh, it feels good when you serve him with all of you. When you know, everything in my body, every fiber of me belongs to Jesus. Ooh, I give him all of me, my mind, my body, my soul. Everything belongs to God the Father through his son Jesus. The Bible says, the Bible says, to them that have been sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints. 1 Corinthians 1, 2 will tell you that. Called to be saints. Mm, my God. With all that in every place call on the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Are you called to be a saint? You sanctified in Jesus Christ? Then. Put your hand out right now. And I'm going to ask God to touch your hand with a healing anointing. Put your hands out right now for healing anointing. To put it into you right now. Ooh, I got six minutes. In the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you for tonight. Six minutes to go. Here's what I want to do. I want to give you a word. I want to give you this. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. Jeremiah 33 and 6 I want to give you this Behold I will bring it Health And cure What is he talking about He's talking about your city Uh oh we're going to take the city Your city needs to be healed Your community Needs to be healed your block needs to be healed. Your street needs to be healed. Your state needs to be healed. Our whole country needs to be healed. We're going to take the city for Jesus. He said in Jeremiah 33 and 6, Behold, I will bring it health. Health is coming to your city. And cure. The cure is coming to your city. And I will cure them and will reveal unto them the abundance of peace and truth. I declare a supernatural healing revival coming to your city. A supernatural healing revival to come and bring the abundance of peace and truth in your community, in your schools. Heal. Be healed. Your whole city be healed right now. In the name of Jesus, in the supernatural realm. Father, please, Father, send angels to the hospitals right now. Send them to the hospitals right now. Go into the operating rooms. Heal right now. All the hospitals. We're going to the hospitals right now. In the spirit realm. Join me right now. By, in the spirit realm, the supernatural, all in the hospitals. I declare every floor healing right now. Miracles all over the hospitals. All over the hospitals. I see you heal. Emergency room, heal. Oh my God. On the operating table at this very moment, heal in Jesus' name. The ones that's supposed to be operated on tomorrow, you'll heal. They're going to cancel the surgery. You won't need it tomorrow. You're coming out. Heal. The ones that have been in the hospital for a long time, you're tired of being in the hospital. Heal. It's time you leave the hospital. You're coming home now. In the name of Jesus. Heal. My God, my God. How about this? We go to the prisons and the jails right now. We go to the lockup. Heal right now. I'm going to say it. Jeremiah 33 and 6. I release it into the criminal system. No. The justice system. 
I release it right now in every prison in America. Every jailhouse. Behold, I will bring it healthy. I will bring it. He's going to bring it to them. And I declare that the spirit of every prisoner healed right now in Jesus' name. I declare salvation healing in you right now. I declare right now that you are healed in your mind, in your spirit right now. I bind up all anger spirits. I bind up all rejection spirits. I bind up every negative spirit in your life and I declare you healed right now. I got about three more minutes. So, in the name of Jesus, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. He was the healing Jesus in Capernaum. Ooh, he was the healing Jesus in Galilee. He was the healing Jesus by the seashore. Mm, and he's still the healing Jesus today. Isn't that good news? Isn't that real good news? I believe that's real good news. They recognize God. When healing occurs in a place, people will recognize God. Ooh, they will recognize that there is a healer in the house. And his name is Jesus. Then, woo. Sometimes <laughs> because of the cares of the Lord, We might as well worship the last couple of minutes out. Because you got to, see, look, don't rush this thing. Receive your healing. Take it in. Come on. Yeah, just take the healing in. You have received miracles tonight. Oh, come on. Let's let him do it this morning. Let it just. Penetrate you from head to toe. The anointing of healing is on you. Come on, take it. <laughs> Only Jesus can heal us. And you are healed in Jesus' name. Oh, you are healed by the power of God. Come on, just a minute. Receive all that healing in your body. Receive healing in all your organs, in your head. Mm. Enjoy the Lord. Come on, take it. Rejoice in your spirit. Believe and receive. Know that you've been healed. Speak, declare that you've been healed. I don't care what symptoms you feel. A devil is a lie. His symptoms are lies. We try to make you doubt your healing. Don't doubt your healing. Tell that devil, you're wasting your time. I'm healed in Jesus' name. <laughs> Come on, just a few more. And I'm gone. Just gone for now. But I'll be back with more. Tell everybody that the supernatural power of God is for them today. That they're going to be healed. I don't care what the doctor said. I don't care what the diagnosis said. I don't care about diagnosis. Diagnosis don't move me. Bring it to me in Jesus' name. And I declare that Jesus Jesus, Jesus will and has healed your body and your life. You ready to go? There's Amar. See him back there? My mom and my daddy. Love you. Pray for me. Every demon in hell hate my guts. I'm the most hated man in hell, but they can't stop me. Because Jesus won't let me. Long life. Long life to you. Long life. And good health. Long life. Good health. Prosper. Don't want to go, y'all. The power. 